As an artist, because of being a survivor, I'm a survivor, I've been resuscitated many times, and I was probably aware at the age of three that, you know, life wasn't going to go on forever. So at the core of my work is really understanding the human condition and people. My name's Rachel Gadsden, and I'm a visual and performance artist. I have spent probably about the last 30 years of my life as an artist, and it's very much my life. I, I will admit that I'm a complete workaholic. I paint all the time, draw all the time, and it's my total passion. I was actually born with a disability. I have a lung condition. And more recently, I found out, probably about, well, 15 years ago, that I have an eye condition called retinoschisis. So I've lost a fair amount of my sight. I can remember the first moment I was told that I had quite a serious eye problem and that it was going to have to be investigated. And it's all I can really describe it is as if I'd been sort of like punched in my chest. It, it was quite terrifying. And I remember coming home and I made a sculpture in my studio with my eyes closed because I was thinking, how's all this creativity going to come out in another way? And then one day I realised, you get on with this or you give up. And I was not going to give up, never. I was approached by Roche to be part of this quite incredible creative project that shows how living with visual impairment can actually also be empowering too. I'm working with a blind poet, Dave, and also Baluji, who's an instrumentalist and performer, and we'll be working with his orchestra. And the other side is we're also working and connecting with patients who have visual loss or visual impairment. And it's almost as if I've met a group of kindred spirits from all around the world and that we all understand something that's unique to us. It's hard to understand how much sight means to us until we realize we could lose it. It took me a whole month to seek medical help. I didn't believe it was just cataract, like the first doctor said, and I was right. The second doctor explained I had diabetic retinopathy. Goodness me, Lucera, you've been through quite a challenge. How have you coped with it? I have undergone several surgeries to save my vision, and through each recovery, my family has been by my side. They did everything for me. Now I feel I have a second chance, and I am forever grateful to everyone who has helped me. When I first noticed my vision beginning to fail, I didn't even tell my wife and daughters. I didn't want to share this burden with them. Every time I spilled my drink or missed my shot at a basketball hoop, I would worry that their suspicions would grow. It's been really interesting finding out about the different conditions that Thanakan and Lucera have. Thanakan has a form of age-related macular degeneration, and Lucera has diabetic retinopathy. And I suspect they both see in quite a similar way to the way I see. That's what I've understood from the conditions when I've looked them up, we see in a similar way, which actually draws us back closer together again. But of course, nobody would know. You can't see that I have vision loss at all. I just, you know, people say, oh, you wear glasses, don't they, don't they work for you? But of course, it's not so simple as that. I'm always asked, what's it like to have visual impairment? How do you see? And often I think, it's like swimming underwater. And sometimes you can see a little bit and sometimes you can't see anything at all. But what's really interesting is that although I might see less and it's all blurred, my imagination has completely gone through the roof. So I sort of feel that I see the world in a far more beautiful way. And that's what I hold on to. If I walk into a forest, it's like the brightest, most wonderful forest ever because there's also my brains coming in and telling the story too. I will also agree with you that we don't see with our eyes, we 
see with our brains. Eyes are light sensing organs that take a message to the brain and the brain interprets the images. And the brain has a lot of plasticity to where it can fill in the missing pieces. And this allows people to have wonderful adaptive uh, capabilities despite being sight limited. It's quite interesting when you tell somebody that you have vision loss. The first thing I'm usually told by the person is, oh my goodness me, that would be the worst thing that could ever happen to me. And I look at them and I say, but it hasn't happened to you. It's happened to me. What I hope this project and this campaign does is make people feel just a little bit more sensitive about the fact that it does happen to people and how they might be able to support those people that it does happen to. Because it could happen to anyone. It really could. I never expected this to happen to me, but it has, and I'm living with it. And I'm living really well with it. And so is everybody involved in this project. But if we can just bring that openness and kindness and generosity, then the world becomes a much better place to be. I'm really excited to show you what I've come up with. And of course, I'm excited about the performance day. That's gonna be really magical all coming together. And ultimately, I hope that somehow this project empowers individuals who are experiencing vision loss and that they know that there is life beyond what's been happening to them. It should just be very empowering. <laughs>